involved in all year, and the game started that way. I, I felt uh, right off the bat that, that it was uh, with the very physical nature of the game itself that it was going to be a, a long, tough night and that anything could happen in a game like that. And uh, we felt that they came out with the intention of, of bumping and pushing and leaning and grabbing and, and just playing a very physical, aggressive type game, and which is uh, not uncommon when you're on the road. Uh, and I, I was on the officials constantly about, hey, uh, you better clean this up or else, you know, something could get out of hand. And obviously, especially when you're on the road, you don't like those kind of things to happen. And, and then uh, we were down, I guess, uh, 14 points or so with uh, a minute and a half to go, uh, coming right down into the, the final closing of the game. And, and, and for all intents and purposes, the game was over. We, we were out of the game. and. We came down, LeBradford hit a three-pointer, and, and uh, Martin jumped on Purvis's back uh, trying to, you know, to, trying to anticipate the rebound and fouled him. Uh, and then the pushing and the shoving and the scuffling, and then uh, the fight broke out, and, and uh, Martin threw the first punch and hit LeBradford, and then Herb retaliated with him, and then it got, uh, the fans got involved, and, you know, it was a kind of a messy thing, and obviously you would hope that things like that don't happen. And, uh, but it did, and I, I blame the officials in, in that regard uh, because they did not, in my opinion, uh, do a good job keeping the game under control. And then uh, the game, then we came right down to the last few seconds and, and uh, down three points, and, and uh, Craig Hawley, uh, we had the ball, out, they missed a free throw, and we Purvis rebounded, threw it out to, to Craig, and he dribbled across the 10-second line, hit a 35-footer with the... Uh, no time on the clock uh, to tie it up, and it went into overtime. And at the end of the first overtime, it, it was tied up. In fact, we got five points ahead of them in the first overtime, and they came back, scored the last five points, and, and tied it up in the overtime. And then we ended up uh, uh, winning by 10 in the second overtime. But the whole uh, nature of the game was just one of those kind of games where it was just a very tough physical game the whole game and and you just had the feeling that something was going to happen there's a lot riding on the game it was they just come off a loss at cincinnati and, and were playing back at home and they were undefeated at home and it was the it's just the kind of a game that you you know you know it's going to be tough i think that uh, did put the cardinals in first place in the metro and it was a, a big win for louisville almost an impossible comeback uh, Jock was there with us. He's been covering the action, and of course, uh, I don't know where Jock is, but I understand he's gone out to get some new equipment. Let's see what his report is today. Oh, hello there. Hey, well, I'm getting ready. See, I got my glasses on. They can't hit me, but I'm going to be ready the next time, and I'm going to do my part out there, because, hey, next year when we go back, if there's anything happening, I'm going to be right in there among them. I'm only kidding, you know that for sure. It was a heck of a game down there, and the thing I came away the proudest of was that being down 14 with a minute and six to go and being able to come back and win that game, the thing I was the most proudest of is our kids got the toughest in the last minute and six and in the next two overtimes. Our kids really got tough, showed a lot of stuff inside, and that might just be a key to get us going here like that. The officiating. I think they were a little bit lax to start with, and everybody had the idea it was going to be that kind of a game. Our people backed up too long, I thought, but they got tough at the end. I'm proud of the Cardinals, a great win for them. And I can't talk no more, man, because I got to get ready. I got to get ready to whip somebody. Yeah. Uh, after the, the fight in the game, and, and uh, it, where, LeVat, where Bradford hit the three pointer, and, and Purvis hit the one and one, and Kenny Payne made four of the six technical free throws that we shot, uh, I said that, that the time out and before the play was resumed I said to the guys I said hey suck it up play as hard and as tough as you can I said something good is about to happen to us I said we haven't had much good happen to us in this past year and I said we're due to get some breaks and then when Craig Hawley hits the three-point shot that just shows you it's not over till it's over I mean uh, they say that uh, until the fat lady sings uh, you know it's not over and it wasn't over and we were very fortunate obviously to come back and win that one but uh, I think it was a good lesson to be learned that it's never over till it's over.
I think South Carolina is well on their way to breaking that jinx that Louisville's had over them. You know, Denny Crum's beaten them eight out of nine times. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Frank McGuire Arena for what has been billed as the Battle of the Metro Ballers. In this corner, from Columbia, South Carolina, the challengers, wearing the white trunks and weighing in at a combined weight of over 1,000 pounds, and with an undefeated record of 8 0 in this arena, the South Carolina Fighting Gamecocks. Gamecocks! And in this corner, from the River City of Louisville, Kentucky, wearing the red trunks trimmed in black, also weighing in at more than one half ton, the champions, those battling birds, the Louisville Cardinals! Cardinals! Hazel Franklin tries for three, and there's a battle going on. point lead for South Carolina with a minute and six seconds left. There was really no reason to even get involved in something like that. You just want to play the game out and let it go. Eight-point shot. It's got to be Holly now. Down. Holly fires for three. Just got a big block. The defense again by South Carolina. Now we're in the final minute. 15. Great pass to Ellison. Purvis Ellison with a big, big play. Off the heel of the rim. Spencer. Boy, oh, he's having a great overtime period. But now the ball and a scramble on the floor. Bodies are piled up everywhere. The possession arrow belongs to Louisville. Let's meet our uh, sophomore from Noblesville, Indiana, Craig Hawley. Point shot. It's got to be Holly now. Holly fires for three. Got it! Oh, it into overtime. OT. I don't believe it. Craig Holly just sent this game to overtime. Unbelievable. Uh, the shot that I hit at the end of the South Carolina game has really caused a lot of excitement for me over the past week. Um, a lot of a lot of people around the city obviously watched the game and. It kind of made me understand how much basketball means to this city because of the fact that uh, I'll be walking downtown and people will recognize me and say something. And they're always saying, nice shot. Uh, so the city is very into U of L basketball. And uh, it's, it was a big thrill. And uh, I'm just glad things worked out for the best. Coach had diagrammed a play to get the ball to Keith in the middle of the floor. And as soon as I got it, I turned and looked for Keith. And I didn't feel like he was open. So my next thought was, I'm just going to dribble it as far as I can. And, and get off a shot. That's all you can do. Uh, there wasn't any pressure because no one expects you to make it. It's not like a layup or something like that. You're going in there and you're shooting up a shot that most people will call a prayer. And if it goes, great. If not, no one's going to really say anything. At least you get a shot off. So I was just interested in getting as good a shot off as I could. Uh, it was probably the happiest the team has been in the two years I've been here. It was after that win. We all came in the locker room and we were just jumping up and down, giving each other high fives and everything because of the fact we faced so much adversity and came through. And uh, we hadn't come up with a big road win yet during this year, and that was something we went down there to do. We felt like we hadn't played well on the road. And to face that kind of a situation and come out on top was a great confidence builder for us. And now we just have to take that and, and go forward with it.